Everybody loves a winning streak. A connected series of victories that denotes a period of athletic dominance. The beauty of streaks is that they're binary, like ones and zeros. They either continue, or they don't. You know I run the streets, in a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. Pride up in my environment. Always keep it cheap, you know I run the streets, in a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. Welcome for round two of this year's UCI World Cup. One of the biggest races of the year. Fort William is just so sick. In 2002, Nickelback was top of the pops with the song, This Is How You Remind Me. More positively, 2002 was also the first year that Fort William hosted a World Cup downhill. One of these things has aged a little better than the other. It's 100% man-made in the middle of like a windswept swampy hill. There's nothing around it, it's just one track, and it is long, and it's rough. The wheels and everything is just like, pff, collapse because the speed is just really, it's huge. No downhill athlete, male or female, has been as dominant over the past two years as Rachel Atherton. That would all end here, exactly where it started. A dislocated shoulder in practice, putting an end to the streak. But with loss comes opportunity. The track is always uh, one of the toughest because it's like four minutes forty, so it's super long. Everyone's stating that it's a big man's track and only Rennie and Nart used to win. Yeah, I was kind of pretty stoked when I proved everyone wrong. It was definitely a race that I'll never forget. Consistent. It's one of those words with double meanings. For as validating of a being reliable, steady or dependable can be, they're not often expressions associated with winning streaks except when it comes to Greg Minar. So Minar is attacking here, and the advantage grows again. Over eight seconds now. Oh, look at the time! And Greg Minar takes his 19th World Cup win here in Fort William. It's kind of my own pressure that I put on myself to, to win and to want to win that badly. Troy Brosnan now. His only World Cup win came here in 2014. Will he do through the woods? Big dab there. Once your feet go down, you're in trouble. Because you can't keep your weight back once your feet are off. Brosnan now charging down towards the line. Yes, Brosnan goes into the number one spot. Nearly three seconds for Troy Brosnan. Just outside the fastest qualifying time yesterday of Greg Bernard with a 444.92. Hip-hop has their ice. Billionaires have their private jets. In mountain biking, the ultimate status symbol may be suspension. When you look at audience uh, background, you know, you trust the brand, you trust what they do. We started with motocross 1976. And we're the first team to bring it into mountain biking. Only disciplines that we can relate to is actually motocross as far as shock speeds and front fork speeds. I would say 80% of the technology was brought over. Holding Sprout new behavior to the bike, the limits are actually further than what they were. The rider can complain about traction, but hardly complain about comfort. I think the run before was better for sure. So, okay. so we're gonna go back to this setup. And if they get the traction, they will get the comfort. Together, I think we can bring it to the next level.
This, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be worth watching. He wants to prove that this race can be won on 27.5 inch wheels. You can see he was fastest at split one. My front wheel just slipped off the rut and went down in trees. Oh, and he's a long way back, so this is not Bruni's day. I can say I got a lucky in Fort William. I was not focused enough and not in the game enough, so I'm not blaming the luck or anything, I'm just blaming me. Frustration. It's the feeling of success not being achieved. It's a sensation that two-time downhill world champ Danny Hart also knows all too well this year. Danny Hart might want this more than any other rider here today. Oh, it's a mess! Hart goes down in the trees! This tiny portion of track was just absolutely kicked, and that was pretty much what decided the race for a lot of people. Everyone loves an acronym, right? Here's one that's been popular here in Fort William. OTB. Over the world. Here he is then, the 2012 winner on this course. Here he comes down, it's pretty clean there. Well, it was going well, now he's got to find his, get his foot back in the cleat there, these clip pedals. Holds a tight line as well, and he's up! No, my word! Four and a half seconds nearly! That is unbelievable, that top section. My goodness, what a strange place for a mistake! Unfortunately, I had a little crash in my race run right at the bottom and one of the easiest turns on the track, but was just trying to kind of push it through there and uh, lost the front end and, and slid out. Only off the podium once here in seven years. The rain really coming down now, but Darren Gwynn is going to go fastest by nearly a second, 0.87 up. Aaron Gwynn now moves into the number one spot. This man is going to have something to say about it. The fastest qualifier, Mr. Fort William. Can he make it? And he's now armed on that 29-inch wheel bike as well, and he loves it. Now, hold on, hold on. Haven't we already done this wheel size debate to death? Wasn't this supposed to be settled already? Right, right, the big wheel! Oh, right, it was. But then this happened. Whoa, look how slick it is! And we still don't really know whether all this talk about girth is much ado about nothing. Here he comes fast into the woods. He'll know, pulling on all his experience, not to rush through there. A little bit of a dab. But he's up on three seconds. Oh, Greg Menard. Here he comes charging down the waterline. He even managed to get some pedal strokes in there. Menard is going to take his seventh win. In Fort William, and there's no luck about it. His 20th World Cup win of his career. Nearly three seconds. That is absolutely madness. With rain in your face, I don't care what size wheel you've got. This was the toughest one for sure. Honestly, when I saw his run, I was like, OK, he knows he's winning right now. And this is not luck, this is just uh, talent, I would say. Our intro talked about streaks. So why spend our time talking about suspension, ancient history and acronyms? Because talent wins races. But so does technology and experience and not crashing. It's a balance of elements, an equation our protagonists will either try to create or to maintain at the next race in Austria. Now I know where I do mistakes. I ride faster than what I used to do and I need to find the limit. If you're not on the edge of crashing, you're not gonna win. You want to win races, man. You want to be the fastest dude on the day. Risk versus reward equals wins.